Hello guys, welcome to Zero to Hero. This is the shocking truth about the ICP price manipulation at launch, part 2. In this video, we are going to continue the discussion from the previous video and I will show you not only the manipulation at launch, but also in the following weeks after the launch. And what happened in the following weeks after the launch was even worse than what was going on before and at launch. In this video, I'm going to show you all the relevant news articles that I have found and data, charts, metrics, and indicators. So let's dig deep into the rabbit hole. Okie dokie, guys, I will focus on this article from Crypto Leaks, where attacks on ICP initiated by a master attack, multi billion dollars price manipulation on FTX. Very quickly to recap, what did I say in the and explain in the last video? So at launch, the fully diluted valuation of ICP was two hundred and thirty billion dollars. Just as an example, currently uh, the market cap of ICP is five billion dollars. Two hundred and thirty billion dollars is higher than most projects in the crypto space, including Binance, Solana, Cardano, uh, Near Protocol, AVAX, and so on and so forth. Much, much, this is much, much higher. On top of that, I did mention that uh, Internet Computer was listed by Coinbase, by Binance, and other exchanges. However, what is interesting that FTX did front run all these exchanges and did list FTX perpetual futures four days before launch. This provided an opportunity to inflate the price of ICP like a balloon and afterwards the price uh, dropped heavily due to the market manipulation. In fact, the market cap fell by $200 billion in the following six weeks after launch. How was this even possible and why did this happen? Because simply, ICP is a project that has amazing technology and that aims to do something that these blockchains cannot achieve at the moment. Therefore, the launch of ICP could have potentially disrupted the status quo in the blockchain industry, especially in 2021 when it was launched because we had an altcoin season that was ongoing at the moment. Therefore, many, many uh, people in the crypto space were extremely greedy at the time. They're still greedy. Now, nothing really has changed. I will show you exactly how the ICP perpetuals were weaponized and what happened with the trading volume. So let's get straight away into some charts here. So, uh, not only uh, there was a price manipulation with the perpetual futures, but I will show in this video what happened after that, which was even worse in my personal opinion. FUD at a large scale, not only from some retail investors or paid fathers or influencers, but also by the press, then we had some reports regar regarding ICP. We will going to uh, analyze those reports to see if the information provided are correct or not. Mainstream media, lawyers, and so on and so forth. There was a huge, large-scale pressure and fad regarding ICP that, of course, uh, had a detrimental, a very detrimental effect for ICP. Let's move on. Let's take a look at the trading volume, uh, which is the last thing I did show in the uh, last video. You can see that when the perpetual futures were launched, you can see this huge spike in the price. The volume profile is still low. I did mention already that the price of the FTX futures at launch was exaggerated in my personal opinion. It did start trading at around $100 more than $100, there was a week, then dropped, and then the price was growing. Some will say naturally, I still believe that the increase in the price value was very, very big, $180 around um, before launch. So then we had the situation at launch that you may see here, look at the volume profile. Was the, were these actual buyers here 
or was this a fake volume? In this video, we are going to analyze this volume profile just to show you that a ton of this volume does not come from retail investors, does come from investors that are trying to manipulate the price, that are trying to show very, very large increments in the volume profile to show to retail investors, hey, there is a ton of hype, jump on board. And many, unfortunately, did jump on board and did lose everything. After that, the uh, volume stabilizes magically, as you may see, and the price start to drop into oblivion. So uh, let me show you also uh, the effect of the drop of a Bitcoin on the price of ICP. And many people say, hey, it was all fault of Bitcoin because Bitcoin dropped heavily after ICP was launched. In my personal opinion, this couldn't be farther from the truth. It is true that Bitcoin dropped 50% in a few weeks. However, this is nothing out of the ordinary in the crypto space. If the launch, launch of ICP was fair, I still believe the price would have dropped, but not as significantly as it has dropped due to the whole manipulation at launch. So let's take a look now and let's uh, start reading where we stopped uh, with this article so we can understand better what was going on. So Genesis occurred on the 10th May of 2021 at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Major crypto exchanges such as Coinbase and Binance then launched spot markets that allowed the public to buy and sell real ICP tokens. It is important to understand how and why the prices of ICP perpetuals and real ICP token mirrors and track one another. So the whole point here is that uh, the manipulation with the FTX perpetual futures was possible because uh, the, tr uh, the price of ICP needs to track the perpetual futures. If that not, is not the case, this provides a large incentive to some investors to, uh, and I will show you what they can do if that's not the case. So let's read. If the price of ICP perpetual is higher than that of ICP, then financial traders can immediately profit by creating an arbitrage. An arbitraging opportunity arises for them and they can just um, arbitrage the difference using special hedging trades, which will dry up the price of the real ICP tokens. For such reasons, the price of ICP perpetuals and ICP are linked and will always converge over time if they become uncorrelated. If the price of ICP perpetual is higher than that of ICP and has strong support, then the price of ICP will inevitably be pulled upwards to meet it, which is actually what happened. If you don't understand this mechanic, let me just explain you with a very uh, easy example to digest. Stable coins. So imagine that you have $100 billion in a reserve and you now issue 100 billion stable coins, for example, USDT. And let's imagine it's 100% backed by real dollars that are physically somewhere deposited and custodied. Okay, now, very interesting point. What would happen if USDT would start trading at 0 0.98 or 0 0.95? And you know that there are in a safe place $100 billion of stablecoin. In this case, it's a no-brainer, right? You will go in the open market and buy a ton of USDT because you have an arbitrage opportunity. You will buy uh, USDT at some point, it will repack because there is actual dollars to pack this. And when um, the pack is met, once again, you will just convert to real dollars and you made 5%. Easy peasy. This is the same mechanics that perpetual futures follow. And uh, this is how perpetual futures and ICP tokens were linked. So by the sole fact that they were managed to launch this four days prior to launch, that they managed to inflate the price of these perpetuals like a balloon, the price at launch could not be at the fair price, but had to be the inflated price of 495 uh, 4.29 dollars, not 
30 or 40 dollars as in my personal opinion was the fair price but a much much higher price so let's continue from 6 p.m to 7 p.m pacific immediately after network genesis icp perpetual's trading volume went into extreme overdrive 250 times higher than in the preceding day. So the trading volume, as you have seen from the previous chart, exploded. Who created this? Only retail investors, you think so? No. Many, many people tried to present a much higher trading volume so that it can create an environment of hype, which, by the way, was already present because four months before launch, many, many investors were interested. There were many articles regarding that. There uh, has been an environment of a bubble, okay? So, around 7 a.m. Pacific, ICP Perpetual's trading volumes suddenly normalized again and the price of ICP began to fall. So you cannot tell me that just in one hour the trading volume is 250 times higher than normal and that at some point after an hour all retail investors just lost their interest and the trading volume dropped. Of course not. It's clear as day that this is not the case. It's clear as day that the trading volume was manipulated and there has been some manipulation beforehand going on, at least based on all this information that CryptoLix provided. Now, uh, let's move on. In the 10 days after Genesis, the price of Bitcoin went into a steep decline, falling 34%. In the 10 days after Genesis, the price of ICP fell 76%. So you may see here the chart that I have shown uh, before. Uh, the price of Bitcoin dropped. This is true. There was an announcement of Elon Musk that uh, does not want to support Bitcoin because of environmental uh, concerns and so on and so forth but this wasn't the reason why icp dropped in value the reason was that it was inflated purposely like a balloon okay now uh, let's continue reading there were a lot of attacks on icp and it was plugged uh, as a pump and dump scheme a rug pull or an exit scam so once again, I will repeat what the pump and dump scheme really is. Pump and dump scheme is um, characterized by two elements, very aggressive marketing and very, very little development. Why would you develop a project if you already know that you will dump on all retail investors? You will try to focus on marketing, creating this false environment of a bubble and so on and so forth. However, as we have witnessed in the next three years after launch, the Definity Foundation is still here. They are still developing. They are still bringing innovation into the crypto space. They are still working and their marketing is still not aggressive. They are acting like a crypto university. They are creating and participating in hackathons. They have a lot of in initiatives that are extremely interesting. For example, ICP Hub Mexico now uh, provided uh, the opportunity to 4,000 students in Mexico to get a wallet, to have a Chanky Bitcoin in, on the wallet for free and to spend their Chanky Bitcoin to buy things for school or simply food and much other, many other things. So these initiatives are, in my opinion, very positive and just show that they are Keep, uh, that they keep on working, that they keep on developing, and they keep on innovating the crypto space. Not uh, a pump and dump scheme by any means, in my personal opinion at least. So the blockchain industry contains many competing tribes that are formed by token incentives. People in these tribes alternately promote, shield the networks are, uh, are invested in and attack troll competitive networks that threaten their investments using social media. Many of these shilling and trolling armies are unscrupulously directed and incentivized by organizations behind blockchains as part of their marketing efforts. So let me explain you how this whole game works. I'm a content creator, so I receive on a daily basis a ton of marketing uh, offers to shield tokens from other projects. 
So this is how it works. Uh, you have a crypto project and maybe you have some development, but not really, you know, you're trying to promote your project. So what you should do, what's the quickest way to promote your, uh, to increase the price, not to develop your project, of course, but to create an environment of hype, a bubble. So how will you do that? So you will pay um, content creators, YouTubers to start talking about that. This will create interest. You will pay journalists to start to talk about that. Of course, you need to pay all of them. You need to provide incentives. You need to airdrop tokens to them. You need to pay them in dollars and so on and so forth. You need to spend a ton of money to do that. And you then create an environment in which people tend to believe, wow, this project is amazing. Everyone is talking about this project. In reality, they don't know that there is absolutely almost no development and no growth. The only thing there is, is a facade, a facade of false promises. In my personal opinion, this is not the case for ICP. I did show a ton of different metrics on my channel. Just go check uh, the previous videos from yesterday in which I show just what happened in July, just in one month, all the partnerships, all the relevant news and all the stats for uh, this project and you will see and then you can take in consideration this and decide for yourself is this a rug pull is this a scam or this uh, is a project that is really working so let's uh, now take a look at toxic frenzy on social media that was created after the token launch this was even worse than what happened at launch and prior to launch so false claims that the definity foundation team is fake a troll on Reddit published a report that the team displayed on the Definity Foundation website was fake and they had bought fake LinkedIn profiles. Once it came to the attention of its founder, in a reply he offered a bounty to whoever would reveal the author of the report and it was deleted. Uh, of course, I will show you uh, now what happened and uh, I will show you this post. They're still on Reddit. Uh, or rather, uh, the post was overall deleted, but we still uh, see uh, the comments here. And I will show you uh, the comments. So, uh, project team is 80% fake profiles with uh, fake uh, biographies. Uh, this is the post we needed. Uh, project team is 80% fake profiles with fake, uh, fake biographies. This can be done in a few ways, usually costs uh, 5 to $50 per profile creation, a picture, paragraph, or text, blah, blah, blah. So they claim this is all fake. However, we have then a comment from another user that claims, I'm not seeing any actual evidence here, much less proof. Can you demonstrate that even a single one of the members on the website is fake? Pick one, any single one, and show some evidence they don't actually exist. There are a number of people on their website who are famous in computer science circles, who are real, who have given talks in person and online at various conferences and whatnot, and whose existence and employment at Definity can be verified. It takes a lot more time before something can be declared vaporware, like a DOM eternal or similar, blah, 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 doom eternal or similar. Anyway, the point here is that uh, the Definity Foundation has a team of 270 members. All of those are real people. You can go check their website. You can go check their curriculum. You can see that even after three years after this was posted, they are still here. They still exist. And as this person mentioned, they uh, many of them uh, take part in conferences. They really exist. They worked for Microsoft, for Google, for IBM, for big corporations. These people exist. So all these uh, fake posts were, um, uh, were shared on social media after the launch. We can see also the fake team members fiasco. There are many articles like that all over the internet. Let's read just to understand what type of information these people were providing just a couple of weeks after launch. Definity knew all of the above. That's why they worked hard for years to create the perfect situation, one, a, a one, a one hit wonder, one trick pony to abuse the uh, killable people for huge gains. They took a page out of Charles Hoskinson, ADA Cardano book and made it better. 
Charles, like Dominic Williams, used to be a classic nobody who managed to create an image around this project that netted him huge gains. Definity used all of Cardano instruments and just dialed a twax. Some of them are well-presented idea buzzword promises of miracles, well-designed website, big team, all of which supposedly extensive careers in IT, and so on and so forth. Uh, and he claims that these people don't exist. Um, roadmap, DAP promises, DeFi projects, etc. Tons of pictures, quest, uh, guest appearances, and big talk shows, public speeches, etc. One hour updates on GitHub as it uh, as if someone is working overtime on the project to make it huge, big, best social media presence. Instant listing on major exchanges, which usually takes ages to list new projects. In order to execute the perfect scam that will net you $10 billion, you need years of preparation. Definity just did that the perfect scam. Okay, and uh, here uh, this person lists why. 80% uh, fake profiles, white paper tech is nothing special, roadmap, uh, roadmap defied devs plans are all vaporware. Their vision of the future is already here much, much better, faster and cheaper with far less hassle. So first of all, this post is so full of misinformation. As I mentioned, the team is real, they exist. Three years after, we are still here. Uh, the technology is nothing special. This couldn't be farther from the truth. If you are and if you entered with me very deep into the rabbit hole, you know that uh, their technology is extremely special in much, much better than competitors. Roadmap non-existent. Well, they have a 20 year roadmap uh, roadmap for this year. It's absolutely epic in my personal opinion. Go check it out. DeFi, non-existent DeFi. Well, that was true until uh, six, 12 months ago. Now the DeFi ecosystem is once again peaking and increasing and there is a revamp going on, Chinky Fusion. Do you believe if this was really a rock pool, would they even create all these Chinky peers? Would they even try to provide incentives to bring some liquidity on chain? No, they would have ended developing a long time ago. Dabs, there are no dabs. Well, let me tell you, for example, a private bank in Switzerland is already using a dab that is built on the Internet Computer Protocol to, uh, for KYC and AML purposes. Plans are all vaporware. Their vision of the future is already here. Where? Tell me which project it is that is much, much better, faster and cheaper with far less hassle. I don't know any. Maybe somebody in the comment section can enlighten me on this fact. So let's go, let's go back and let's continue. So creating false truths uh, through repetition. Uh, so repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. The trolls on social media apply the same strategy. For example, Max Kaiser denounced the project as a rug pull on Twitter to his half a million followers, while also shaming another party who who had earlier conducted an interview with the Definity founder. Rug pulls claims were tweeted with false details down from uh, misinformation. Denouncements were published to Reddit, and specifically, uh, and specially crafted videos were uploaded. Uh, to YouTube as false claims multiplied there created a persuasive fabric of lies and disinformation. So uh, let me show you uh, now uh, this uh, post, uh, just a second, so I can find it. Max Kaiser, uh, still um, this person has around six, uh, 600,000 uh, followers. This is the post uh, regarding the crypto scammers and so on and so forth. Uh, if we move on, uh, we have also many articles uh, or many posts on Reddit. Definity's ICP is the biggest crypto scam in history. This was published three years ago, as you may see. Many, many follow-up comments here, and so on and so forth. Fake tales of victimhood. One troll claimed to be uh, a participant in the Definity Foundation 2018 pre-sale fundraiser and they had treated him uh, shoddily by unexpect unexpectedly vesting his ICP so they could uh, dump their ICP on the markets before he had a chance to sell his own, making him 
ill through stress. Unfortunately, most readers would not have known the pre-sale financing round was aimed at only professional investors and institutions, and they had agreed the ICP they purchased would be distributed in 12 monthly installments post-genesis at the time they contributed. So, uh, if you know what happened in Genesis, the Genesis token allocation, and so on and so forth, you know that there is a vesting schedule. These investors knew the vesting schedule when they bought in. It's impossible to take part in a, a such a type of um, venture uh, venture capitals that are taking part in this initial funding rounds. They know what is going on. They have strict rules when they will get tokens, how much, and at which pace, okay? So, uh, let me show now, uh, once again, um, this, uh, this whole comment about this whole situation. And if you scroll down, if you read, and I did read through this whole comment, uh, this comment has and contains a ton of information that is incorrect. However, the amount of information and the way this information is presented, you can you can see how much of this information is presented here. This can create um, a false sense of really uh, ICP being a scam, a rag pull, because they present so much information and they put it in such an order and to such extent that an investor that is not informed at the, at the time there weren't so many information regarding the project as we have now, the masses would have easily believed that the project is a scam, a rug pull, and there is no development whatsoever going on. Uh, let's move on. Um, professionally created attacks soon appeared. For example, Arkham Intelligence, June 28 of 2021, a previously unknown and mysterious organization called Arkham Intelligence appeared, with an equally unknown founder and CEO, Miguel Morel, claiming to specialize in crypto industry research. They produced a report claiming to show how the price was falling because the project was a rug pull, which uh, they promoted using a slickly produced video Miguel claimed that I was not hired or compensated to release this report, presenting himself as the white knight coming to the defense of ICP holders. The video begins with a graph falsely showing the price falling from around $800, greatly exaggerating the price fall for maximum effects. Some price feeds from markets show such prices, but they are only initial drop-in prices that existed momentarily. So basically, uh, this was a wick to the upside. The price never closed at $800. So for example, if you're taking a look at the candlesticks, uh, and I'm looking usually at the daily charts. Um, lately, I'm showing the one hourly chart for ICP just to show uh, the movement of the price in the short term. If the price moves aggressively in one direction or another, we have a wick. This doesn't mean that this candle closed. So they are showing this wick from $800 while the price never uh, really traded at $800. It was just a quick wick to the upside, a liquidation event. So all uh, these longs will be wiped out. And after that, of course, um, the trading volume dropped and we know what happened after that. So uh, let me show you uh, now uh, this uh, report. You can see here what they present, the price higher than $800, and then this massive uh, drop uh, to the downside. Uh, let's continue. Um, and I will show you uh, once again, uh, Arkham still exists and they have a huge following. And this person, Miguel, he's still available and uh, he's still on X. I will show uh, his profile as well. He then goes uh, on to make the case that the price fell because of insiders selling, saying it appears that this was not a coincidence or accident, but was a case of misconduct by those who seem closely connected to ICP and who have been dumping billions of dollars of ICP, while smaller supporters and retail have been left in the dark watching their investment tank, and he will provide ICP holders with the clarity they deserve, again, painting Arkham as a white knight. Well, uh, is there any proof 
that the Definitive Foundation sold tokens. Is there any proof that they dumped millions of tokens on the open market? This is my question. I believe there is no such a proof, and such proof is not presented at least. If the claims are true that the Definitive, that the Definitive Foundation did not sell for weeks after Genesis, and that its founders has sold less than 5% of his holdings, then the Arkham Intelligence report looks like professional defamation. Of course, uh, this is not the end of the story. After that, the New York Times elevated the dubious report created by uh, Arkham Intelligence presenting it as credible in an article published the same day and in their Dealbook newsletter. So this guy comes out of nowhere and then the New York Times just in the same day republishes this whole thing. Um, and in their uh, deal book newsletter, in uh, what appears to be clearly coordinated timing, they repeatedly and erroneously refer to the Internet Computer Genesis event as an ICO, which is illegal, creating the false and damaging impression that those behind the project were law breakers. There can be little doubt that their irresponsible actions caused billions of dollars in additional devaluation of ICP, harming thousands of ICP holders. Here is the article from the New York Times. I will check this article in the next episode. Uh, now it's time uh, to wrap uh, this uh, whole thing up and I will show you um, before continuing that Arkham is still around. They have almost 500,000 followers uh, and uh, I will show you also this article uh, regarding uh, Miguel Morel on iq.wiki uh, that uh, claims that uh, he came on the scene as a co-founder of Reserve Protocol in 2017. He then founded Arkham Intelligence in 2020. And uh, let's read this part here. Uh, and once again, uh, before reading, I would just mention that I did not do an extensive research regarding Arkham or this person, Miguel Morel, of any of what is mentioned here. I'm just presenting uh, some articles here. I did my full research on the whole manipulation event, which I'm presenting here. But let's uh, read this part. In the summer of 2023, Arkham uh, faced criticism with the launch of the Intel Exchange, a token-powered system that rewarded users with cryptocurrency for providing information to identify wallets. The platform allowed anonymous buying and selling of information related to any crypto wallet address through smart contracts. Criticism arose, labeling it as niche to earn or docs to earn system, and chewing revenue models in Web3 gaming and so on and so forth. I don't know if these claims are true or not. Uh, I did not uh, do my specific research on this um, particular thing. However, here I want to mention uh, that, in my personal opinion, the timing of this whole event with the New York Times, with the reports, with uh, all this situation regarding uh, fake uh, profiles on um, Twitter, regarding the fact that uh, many people claimed to have, uh, some people claim to have participated in initial funding rounds, while this is absolutely impossible, and publishing articles that are very long with a ton of information all of this happening at the same time creates a suspicion that something was going on, at least a suspicion. On top of that, we have uh, no information whatsoever regarding Definity selling tokens heavily, dumping tokens on the open market. Even now, the Definity Foundation is not selling a part of their tokens. They're only selling, as much as I know, they're staking rewards over time to continue developing uh, this project. Overall, uh, I will end this video uh, by saying that uh, all of this looks to me like uh, something suspicious going on. As always, uh, make your own uh, research, do your own uh, uh, due diligence. It is very important uh, to take a look at these facts before investing. I did my own research before investing into ICP, and I hope that if you did uh, already invest, you can go back and once again, do your own research, or if you did not invest, just do your own research. This is the only thing that I ask. I don't ask you to buy, sell, or hold ICP. 
I couldn't care less. I just ask you to do your own due diligence before buying any product in the crypto space or even in traditional financial markets. That's all, guys. Overall, uh, thank you very much for watching and thank you for your attention. If you like the content, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, join me on Open Chat, um, check my X profile as well. And uh, once again, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.